For the next couple weeks, we're going to talk about the different tests um, where we can tell whether a series converges or diverges. Um, the last time we started at the top of that page of the summary of convergence and divergence for series page that I gave you in class, and we started with the divergence test. Um, and so this time we're going to talk about the geometric series and P series. Um, so these are just two different types of series. The geometric, you can look at that up there, it's in the form N, uh, form where the sum starts at some number m to infinity of c r to the n. Um, and just like the geometric sequence, where we could tell whether that converged or diverged depending on the value um, that was to raised to the nth power, this works very similarly. If what is raised, so if r, the absolute value of it, if the absolute value is less than 1, then the series is going to converge. Otherwise, it diverges. And this is somewhat similar to what it was for uh, for sequen or for series. Oh, see, I get the words mixed up too. It's what it was for sequences. Um, now, also notice in this that it has this little thing over here that tells you the sum of it. Um, this is one of the ones that we can find the sum for. We can find sums, the actual, what it would add up to for um, geometric series and for telescoping and those are going to be the only two that we will actually be able to find the sum for um, and that notice the capital M in there where it starts so what's in the bottom here that capital M is what that gets raised to right there um, C is the number out in front and then R is what's on the inside all right so let's do let's just do some examples let's look at the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of pi to the n all over 3 to the n plus 1. Now at first this one doesn't look like a geometric series, but I can um, use exponent rules with that 3 in the denominator and make this, I'm going to keep pi to the n in the numerator, and then in the de denominator would be 3 times 3 raised to the n, and now I can combine the stuff that's raised to the n, so I would have 1 third times pi over 3 to the n. And now if I look at, um, if I look at the table and look at this this kind of the form it's in. C is the number out in front, so that's one third. R is what's raised to the nth power. So R is pi over three. Pi is 3.14, whatever, so it's bigger than three. So that's greater than one. So that means R is not less than one. So that's its otherwise case. This series is going to diverge. We did one similar like this before where we had five halves where it was bigger than one and we showed that that diverged by the divergence test. Um, we could do the same thing here. I just wanted to point out that different tests can be used. Um, let's look at another example. Let's actually switch these. So let's go from n equals zero to infinity of three to the n all over pi to the n plus one. Now I need to use the same exponent rules on this one. So the denominator would get separated into a one, or the denominator would get separated into a pi and then a pi to the n, and I can combine everything raised to the n. Now my r is three over pi, and that is less than one because pi is 3.1 and that's in the denominator. And so this one is gonna converge. And I can actually find its sum. So the sum of this is going to equal c, which is the number that's out in front, which is one over pi in this case. 
So C is out in front, C is out in front. And then go into the formula here. So times um, R, which is three over pi raised to the M. The M is what the integral starts with. So that's to the zero divided by one minus three over pi. Anything to the zero is one. So I've got one over pi divided by, I'm gonna find a common denominator here, so pi, pi. This would be pi minus three over pi. And then if I flip and multiply, so this I would get one over pi times pi over pi minus three. Pi's cancel. And so this tells me that if I added up all of the terms of three to the n divided by pi, to the n plus one, I would get one over pi minus three. That would be my sum. Okay, um, and let's do an example with the geometric series. So let's look at the sum from n equals, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with one this time. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus 2 to the n all over 3 to the n. Now this one, because of that 1, does not, again, look specifically like a geometric series, because to have a geometric series, it has to be a number raised to an nth power. There can't be anything else in there. So what I can do is divide that three to the n into both of those terms. And then on the first one, one is the same thing as one to the n. So one is equal to one to the n, because one to the anything is one. And so I can combine that first one into something to the nth power, and then I can combine the second one into something to the nth power. Now, if I look at both of these R values, one third is less than one and two thirds is less than one. And so this is gonna converge. And what's going on here is that I am looking at two separate geometric series in this one. If for some reason this had been a three on the top and a two on the bottom, then we would have had three halves and this would have diverged. All right, but I just wanted to, and I, and I guess what I'm saying there is even if one of them converges, if the other one diverges, the whole thing diverges, the whole thing would go to infinity. Now both of these do converge, so we can find the sum, but we're gonna have to do it separately. We're gonna have to look at the sum of that one third to the n, and then we'll have to look at the sum of the two thirds to the n, and we'll have to add those together. So I'm separately looking at both different sums here. Because this is added, and because this means that I'm adding, I can then sum everything first and then add those things together instead of adding them first and then adding them all together, it's the same thing. All right, so finding the sum, um, I, I have to go back to that formula. Um, and that formula was, I'll write it here on the side, CR to the M all over one minus R. Um, and that's where M is, is where it starts. So in our case, one. Okay, so for this first one, C is one. There's no number out in front. R is one third. Capital M is one. The sum starts at one. Divided by one minus R, one minus one third. I'll have to add to that. C in this second one is one. R is two thirds. M is one, that's where the sum starts. And then I've got one minus two thirds. Okay, so in this first one, I've got one third divided by 
3 thirds minus 1 third would be 2 thirds plus 2 thirds divided by 3 thirds minus 2 thirds is 1 third. And for this first one, if I flip and multiply, I'd have 1 thirds times uh, 3 halves. And in the second one, I've got to flip the denominator and multiply by it. So 3's cancel there, 3's cancel there. I end up with 1 half plus 2. Okay, so that'll be 5 halves. So 5 halves will be my sum for the entire series. And I just wanted to show you what would happen if you had a geometric series that was broken up into two pieces. All right, and the next one we're going to look at this at, in this video is P-series. Um, P-series are pretty self-explanatory. They look like a sum. It doesn't necessarily have to start at 1. This one does, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Of 1 over n raised to some power. If that power is bigger than 1, the series converges. Otherwise, it diverges. These are really straightforward examples if we have the sum of 1 over n from 1 to infinity, in this case, p is equal to 1. p is equal to 1. That is not bigger than 1, and so it diverges. We've already stated this fact, but here's why. The other example that we've stated the fact that it converges is 1 over n squared. In this case, p is equal to 2, and 2 is bigger than 1, so it converges. Notice that it doesn't state that it does converge to pi squared over 6. I stated that in the last video. Um, the only ones that we can find the sum for are geometric series and telescoping series. None of these others we can actually find the sum. We just know that we would get one. Um, and it doesn't matter what number is on the top of this. So we could do the sum from, I don't know, we could do the sum from 3 to infinity of pi over n to the fifth. Actually, we could even do 5 halves. We could do pi over um, n raised to the 5 halves. And in this case, p is equal to 5 halves. That's bigger than 1. It's going to converge. So the common thing on all of these is that n raised to a power, n raised to a power. So an example of one that sort of looks like a p-series, but it isn't quite, sum from n equals 1 to infinity, of 3 to the n all over n squared. So this one sort of looks like geometric, it sort of looks like p-series, but it's not actually either. We can't use these rules that we've looked at to figure out convergence or divergence. There are other rules on this table that we'll use to do this one, but in general, just so to clarify, this is not geometric and this is not a P-series. Um, and so we can't use those, those tests. We would have to look elsewhere. All right, the next video we will move on to more tests um, on that sheet.